you would like a fresh pot of tea, exotic fruits. They were like fresh horses and plenty of new mown hay. They were like a musical instrument somebody knew how to play. I read from books, but also read from papers. And sometimes they were foreign, so I'd sort of translate as I go into something we could live with and sleep with from something I will never, never know. <laughs> well, paper was scarce too, so when they asked me to start writing their letters, I would have to write between the lines in the newspaper. I got so I could write vertically across the horizontal lines. Imagine the stories coming out of that. <laughs> and when <coughs> a bride would go down to the platform to collect her dowry, oh, I was there watching her as she unpacked every cup and saucer, every bread and butter plate, every candlestick and taper. Oh, it would squeal with delight. <laughs> She for the china, and I for the paper. <laughs> when you consider the long-held strain of a story passing through time, you realize some really are worth telling again and again. Oh, they change just like we change, but they're our stories. So. You collect them and you, you stuff them in your marsupial apron pockets. Like that feather you found. Or those, those few heart-shaped pebbles. Or perhaps some seeds or, or a flower with the roots still dangling. I really have to look this one up. <laughs> once an arrowhead, once a sparrow dead. Some things needing mending. Some things needing glue. And always, his letters. Signed, yours as ever, but never a clue. 